Hey guys, it's Trice here, formerly known as Mr. Dragon Triple Zero, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds, it's literally called Speed Bus 4000. This public transit bus, originally made by Seacrest Mobility Company, was a popular bus used in many US cities in the late 1980s through the early 2000s. For this particular bus, it's outfitted with one of the most powerful engines in the game and is considered to be the most fastest transit bus ever without doing any file modifications. With this high of a top speed and how much power it puts out, I'll explain the specs and how I made this bus throughout this portion of the video. The body that I've used to make this ridiculously fast bus is made by a modder named Pilot Kit in his Erga Mio body mod file. It's available in the Automation Steam Workshop and you can check it out with the link in the description below. It has a lap time of 1 minute 6 seconds 21 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track and 1 minute 49 seconds 98 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 241 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 2.1 seconds flat. This vehicle is powered by my rendition of the most powerful V16 engine that produces 4,730.1 horsepower and 3,677.4 pounds-feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 1.8 miles per gallon and weighs 5,900.2 pounds or 2,676.3 kilograms. And for the market, due to the bus costing millions of dollars to make, which includes an unrealistically powered engine, it doesn't compete with anyone in the market. In terms of how I made the Speed Bus 4000, the panel material will be made out of carbon fiber with a monocoque chassis also made out of carbon fiber. With a front longitudinal engine placement and the front suspension uses a double wishbone suspension setup and the rear suspension uses a push rod setup with the quality and pretty much everything at a plus 15. For the engine, it uses my rendition of the most powerful V16 in the game as of right now. Instead of going over the specs again, I'll put the video of how I made it this powerful in the card system on the top right of the screen if you want to learn more about this engine. So now, let's head on over to the drivetrain. For the drive type, we'll be using an all-wheel drive setup with a dual-clutch 7-speed, the best in the game, with the top speed set to 248.5 miles per hour. Even though the estimated top speed is around 242, but the top speed we get here is 241. I think it's have to do with the aerodynamics of this vehicle, lack of front downforce, and the amount of wheel spin that goes to this vehicle. Around 21% spacing-wise, check this out. Wheel spin all 70 gears. <laughs> Man, good luck driving this in BMG. And also, the power distribution is set at 70% in the front, 30% in the rear to make it drive better. For the tires, we're using radio semi slick tires with the tire width maxed out at 395mm to the front and back, running on some 27 inch carbon fiber rims. For the brakes, we're using carbon ceramic six piston brakes. For the front, which its size is set to 420.69mm, even though there's no 69 here, ladies and gentlemen, which is unfortunate. And for the rear brakes, if we go over here, it's also carbon ceramic, but it's a one piston with its size set to 370mm at the pad type at a full blown rear racing setup. Next for the under tray, downforce, max downforce under tray. A little bit of airflow for the brakes, still plus 15 quality for everything. So for the interior, which took me a whopping three days to make, almost four man days, let's take a look at the interior. We got ourselves a sport, quote unquote, sport interior. I mean, if you look at this, I mean, does this look sporty enough to you for the first time making a bus interior? You be the judge of that one. So let's pretend it's a sport interior for the driver's seat and pretty much everybody here that would be sitting here if you were to be the passenger. And of course, no infotainment whatsoever. There is no radio player, none of that in here. So for the safety and all that good stuff, electric variable power steering, trash control and ABS brakes, ECS is a little bit too much for this bus, including launch control, basic 2010 safety standards, and last but not least, for the suspension, you got air springs because buses go pshhh. All that good stuff with the air brakes and all that good stuff and leaning the bus over to the left when you stop for a bus stop, all that good stuff. Dampers, adaptive dampers, active sway bars, running on a full-blown racing setup. Despite a lot of problems in here, such as wheel spin, quality issues, power distribution, dampers being too hard, brake force being too high, RPM issues, semi silk tires, front camber, wheel spin, rear tires, and rear tires. Let's expert this to be meant to drive and test this hell of a bus out. 
So here we are at the bottom map of Rowan County, Tennessee, which you need a beefy computer in terms of RAM, processor, all that good stuff to load this map. And taking a brief look at this bus here. So the interior, even though the seats and the windows are pretty easy, I just used a sun visor, a sun roof, and wired them out to make them look like bus windows here. This was easy to make. The seats here, the floor, but this portion, and we got a gap here. But with this portion here, of especially the bus interior for the driver's seat, this took me quite a while to like think up and make because I never did something like this before on the channel. Which includes part of the driver's cockpit here, including the stairs here. You got these metallic steel stairs, a custom railing on both sides here of the bus, the right side and the left side if you were to get on and get off the bus. And we do got a sponsor here of Social Net to pretend like you got your regular transit bus type of sponsor to usually see on such buses. Including a couple of compartments here to basically replace the bike rack holder on the front of the bus. And also, an honorary Light McQueen. I am speed, because this bus is hella fast. Despite taking a while to make this bus, I'm pretty happy with the results. It's pretty much the most ambitious builds I've ever made to this day. I'll probably make something even more ambitious, like a Formula 1, 2, or 3 vehicle or something along those lines. But anyways, that will come in the future, and hopefully I have the willingness to do so. So right now, while we're out here at the start of the map here, we're going to be doing some basic performance tests with this vehicle. For our performance test, the first thing we're going to be doing is a 0-62 to acceleration test, second, a 6-2 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run, which I guarantee with this vehicle, of having a 21.7 liter engine that's over 4700 horsepower it could reach it but i highly doubt it because with these powerful of an engine when you export from automation to bmg drive they usually just break up explode and all that good stuff because they're stupidly powerful for this game so hopefully that would work out so first of all start with the 0 to 62 acceleration test now hit the gas and look at the temperature gauge. 2.08 seconds of 100.05 feet. God damn. I want to say you see the temperature gauge just explode. We got some engine issues. So let me do a uh, brake test. So with the, the 63 and get ready to brake now. Sometimes we do 63, it goes to 62. I am wrong. Let me do it again so it can go to 62. Because I did test this out in private. I tried doing 63 and it did 62. And I went to 62 on the uh, cruise control. It did 61, which is kind of weird how they do that. So break now. So 62 to 0 in 2.41 seconds of 96.44 feet. Holy crap. Time-wise and distance-wise, this thing stops on a dime. I don't know about top speed to zero, but Jesus, that is like stupid fast. So for a top speed run, let's make these even more interesting. Let's, let's be the bus driver here. Let's line myself up. I'm going to lean forward quite a bit. I should have moved the seat up a little bit because I was worried about the brake pedal, gas pedal, and just the realistic positioning of the vehicle. So let's just hit the gas right now and do our top speed run. We'll get the temperature gauge. All right, be careful with the temperature gauge because we are almost overheating, a turbocharger overheating. Careful on the throttle. Let's just do it manually. So gear five, 140. Let's just do gear six. So let's get the bolts out of this turbocharger. Not do a whole lot of the temperature here at overheating, underheating, engine torque reduced. Okay, this is getting bad. Let's just floor it. Dead. So we'll just crash into something right here. Now we live in Kingston at the Samuel Rayburn Memorial Bridge Clinical uh, Clinic River, or whatever that says. So engine's dead, top speed run, a total failure. So let's hide the UI. I think this is solid. So let's go to 100 times to give an excuse to slow down all the way and do 16. 16 right here. What the hell? So it's semi-solid. Uh, the license plate is taken off from Texas to Tennessee. It don't matter. So that is the engine right here. So uh, hazards going off because impact detected stopping car full time. And main engine broken. So the, oh, oh, the engine was broken to begin with. So whatever. So let me try to F7 it right around here. So get it upright. Go to regular camera and damage wise of the bus. The rear is perfectly fine. The side scuffed up quite a bit. The front got some damage. Left side still scuffed up. And let me see the engine here. Uh, this was this was an interesting one. Even though it's front engine, which is not really practical for such buses being front engine. So that's your engine. So it's located right here. If I were to go up, this would be in the uh, third to second row region of the passengers that would be sitting down the bus. So the third, second row region. So the engine was right around here underneath the driver's seat. And it moved all the way over here. That's like a good, what, five feet, ten feet? That's a lot. 
So even if I do flat out accelerate, the engine still breaks apart because, you know, that's how this game works. Even if you max out the coolant, I try to sell, max out the coolant, it still doesn't really solve the problem. You still get the engine to explode, the engine torque to reduce, the turbocharger overheating, you just can't do nothing about it. So let me park the bus right here and get ready to find a, another course here, another map, to do our time trial run. So time trials, here we go. Pick out a map. Let's do something long, grueling but capable of completing because of how fragile the engine is. Like the Highway Time Trial Italy. So, we'll get the select button. Only got one lap because it's a point-to-point -point race. Let's do it in the a sunrise hours. Make things even more interesting. Get the use out of these headlights, which I never do in these videos. And sorry, Shiny Odd, for stealing your car from the collab. Even though I'm going to make that video real soon of how I've been in that collab with Shiny Odd, Twin Turbos, and everybody with the Le Mans cars, if you've seen those videos. Which I'll explain that once we get to time trial here. So let's hit the play button to spawn ourselves in Italy and go to Italy right now. So here we are at the start and finish line of this here time trial at Italy. And we got some messed up headlights in the back of the vehicle here. You got some of the light of God. How about the front? Uh... Uh, of the vehicle. Okay, well, we got the light of God here in the front of the vehicle here. It sucks if you try to, like, tell what is a headlight, what is not a headlight, all that good stuff. So let's rightfully ignore that. And not only that, our bus body's over the line, our tires are not. So let's get things ready here by starting off this here time trial off here in three, two, one, barely on the gas. Uh, uh, false start. So I've mentioned about the collab I was briefly featured in. I was invited to make a Group C Le Mans race car to be driven at the Spa, also known as the Spa Francourt Champs in Belgium. I made the car, which is the Echelon E60Z, which is a 600 horsepower V6 turbo race car that lacked in downforce. I filled in for a small YouTuber sp- Aw, oh, crap. Damn it, clipped the side of the guardrail there. I was trying to say I filled in for a YouTuber's spot that had some very bad luck recently by the name of Venz. During the building process, he got brutally assaulted a couple of weeks before the race took place and I was asked to take his spot. You may have seen videos from Filmin 86's and Twin Turbo's perspective of the race and me lagging out and not being able to race because of it. It initially took me over a half hour trying to join because of connection issues and everybody's ping at over 250 ms. So, I never got anything good in the BMMP server because of those internet issues. Hashtag AT&T moment. And coming up to the finish right up ahead, what's this gun all the way? I don't care if the engine blows up, the engine blows up, good enough. One minute, 13 seconds, 882 milliseconds, got slow-mo, 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 slow-mo. Okay, Slowbo kicked it just in time. 1 minute, 13 seconds, 882 milliseconds. That puts us first place out of all the vehicles here. Second place is the GMC CV25 Santa Slay, a.k.a. Santa Claus is kidnapping RV, or cargo van, I'm sorry. The Ozone ADF-V, I no longer have access to that video thanks to my recent termination and my hard drive pooping out on me. An ADF-PG K-Car, which that's what it was, made over a year ago. And fourth place? Wait. Oh, oh, this is the one where I did the MPG test. Third place was just flat out flooring it. And this one, trying to get the most MPG, was, was fourth place, around 9 minutes 30 seconds. <laughs> so hopefully, I have some crazy reaction times to hit free roam and bust pump. Damn it. Well, anyways, here's the collision full time. Edge is broken. Tire's gone. Smoking right now. So let's get to some flat land. Uh, come on, flat land up here. Let's find... Go over here to the airport. So put it over here on the airport one way. And here is the bus that's rising out of the ground. It's been summoned to realize it's been destroyed. And by getting it upright, which it's kind of a pain nowadays to grab on these nodes here with automation vehicles. I was just automation vehicles in general or beam and G vehicles too. So damage wise, front end, I assumed, uh, turn the lights off, it's moderately damaged. But the structural integrity of like the interior of the bus held up very well despite not having seatbelts anywhere. Right side of the vehicle... Impact detected stopping car thanks to these hazards. You got the wheel bissing, got a dent right here, the uh, storage compartment here, the right side of the vehicle. Backside, bent up exhaust pipes, the rear bumper, all that good stuff. Left side, still damage, noticeable, and that'll be it with this vehicle. And while I'm at it, let's do one more time trial, but let's just do a small, small circuit. Uh, let's see if, uh, let's check it, uh, Italy real quick. Let's try freaking Jim Connor, drift this damn thing out. <laughs> One lap, noon hours, with this bus. Take it there right now. So here we are at the start and finish line, right next to the freaking ocean right here of whatever ocean, I'm guessing that. 
And straight ahead of me is a shipping container. So am I going to... Oh no, am I not clear of this? If we don't clear this, take it to Brutus Slope. So let's find out here in three, two, one false start. There, false start. Am I going to clear this? Let's see. Um, damn it. One said, take the time, reverse in the ocean, and just pretty much give up in this time trial. So just reverse, drown, and I'm a boat. And drown the engine. Drown, 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 dead. Yeah! And Murder She Wrote goes to bus, and it's just dead, sitting there, whatever, just right in the freaking water down below. So right now, like I just said, take it to Brutal Slope to see if these passengers here will survive going more than 240 miles an hour with the Sear bus. All right, while I'm at it, what's the way crash to attack crash this dummy at 150 miles an hour? Is this before skating ourselves down this ramp here? And just saying, I don't glorify violence against crash test dummies. So 150, go. God damn, man. I don't think it did a, a tiny, it did, just did a tiny bit of damage. How about the wall at full speed? Jesus Christ. And dummy wise, he's just gonna, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, he's having a seizure. Let's ignore him. So, back. We're okay. We got the wing uh, gone somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Here's the wing. Hashtag no downforce. So, damage-wise, the bus. Wrinkled it quite a bit with the front of the bus here. Still good structural integrity at the interior. Which, that's interesting. Like, if I get into the driver's seat here... Mm, yep. Be okay. Uh, can you shut up there, man? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. Uh, call an ambulance. Hey, excuse me, sir. Um, it seems like you're having trouble. Here, get in the ambulance. Here, I'll run you over so you can get in. Here you in? Good. Let's, um, let's get to the hospital. Never mind. Alright, so here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's skate ourselves down. Let's get a 0 to 60. So skateboard down this here ramp and get a much, much worse 0 to 60 time in 3.86 seconds of 150.36 feet. And there goes the engine. And let's just casually roll down here at 160 plus. You know what, I got an idea. Let's get the engine and survive it as long as possible, get the most out of it before we get to the ramp up ahead. So max gears, gear seven, and just kind of for it, but not hardcore for it. So get ready, keep going, keep going, keep going. 200, 210, 220, 230, 240. We're beyond its top speed at 251 miles per hour, 10 miles an hour above its top speed, but we got an automation and dead. 190 mile an hour is the exit speed, and we're just flat out flying. Just casually flying. We're going the distance up in here. What if I break? Not too bad. And slow us way down. I almost screwed up right there. And watch the bus just eat me. So 16 times, 200 times. Here goes the front, crinkling in. I am speed, and I am dead ish. So it's just going to bounce back up and go to 16, bounce back up, slam the rear end. There goes the rear spoiler. All four tires up in the air. We set the FOV a little bit, and nothing more interesting, so full time. And we're on our side, and two wheeling, and four wheeling. And that was pretty quick at a stop. It was going from two wheeling, had some momentum, but just dead stop right after that. And again, hardly any damage to the rear because, of course, we didn't hit nothing in the rear end of the vehicle whatsoever. And not a whole lot of damage, but we got this bright ass orange light because impact detected stopping car with these hazards. All we did is just made an interesting, weird ass, like, wannabe aerodynamic shape of the front of the bus, like, we're trying to draw more airflow or make it worse, this bus. I don't know. <laughs> now, let's get this vehicle wedged way over there. We can see this mouse here. So, last part of the video, let's skateboard ourselves down the top of the hill here, and let's wedge ourselves down a little wedge thing, which is basically a square block where you wedge yourselves at a ridiculously high speed to get yourselves a wedge-shaped look of your vehicle. So, top speed, engine torque reduced, I don't care. And wait for it, red line. Red line bouncing off the rev limiter, still bouncing, and we got some major smoke coming from your exhaust, and stop right now. Well, lag somewhat helped me out, and somewhat didn't help me out. So let's just get ourselves a camera going. Let's do the more interesting camera angle. Merge size ourselves a block. High DUI, 60 times syllable all the way to... Get ready for a hunter time. And reset the OVV a little bit. And here's the bus. I am speed. I am wrinkling. Way back the FOV, so to get a better look. Even though it looks a little bit weird. There goes the roof, or the, the wing of the vehicle. And I think that is it. So here's some smoke from the tires, all that good stuff, full time. 
I'll oh, weed that son of the hell loud. And like that, we got an interesting ass wedge of this vehicle. Let's bring this down to the bottom, take a look at the aftermath of the structure of the vehicle. So F7 it. And endo. And we made the endo. Nice. I'm a stunt man. So we screwed the hell out of this bus. And for the first time, the driver's seat, the driver component, all that region, the cockpit is hella destroyed. If you look in, he wouldn't survive whatsoever, including some of the front passengers. The rest of the bus would have been okay, not count the G-forces, and people flying out of bus through the windows, windshields, all that good stuff. So back passengers would have survived, the D's front, not so much. And hazards going off because impact detected stopping a bus, not car. And damage-wise, um, this looks like your knockoff, like, box truck type of look, like it's been a blong quite a bit, like by 20 feet or something. Rear end perfectly fine despite the wing that is gone, and the right rear tire is, well, what the hell, is a bit out of place. So let's try to say that, but whatever. So that is the bus, that is dead, and that'll do it. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the Speed Bus 4000. This is quite of an interesting yet ambitious creation that I've made from getting the interior of the bus, making a powerful ass engine, and just blowing up every time at the gas pedal, which kind of sucks making powerful engines. Which, like I said at the beginning of the video, if I were to put the cooling airflow, which I did, I said to a hunter, still overheats in terms of turbocharger and just the engine in general, which I think you can't really do nothing about other than just feathering the throttle and just hoping it doesn't explode. Same thing with the turbocharger. So, overall, just the design of the bus, I really like it. Took a few days just to think up the designs, especially with the stairs, the interior. That took me a few days, which is well worth the time that took making this damn bus. <laughs> and for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up and signing out.